this is the part that I've been looking forward to for quite a while here, which is to give you a deeper look at our user interface. Uh, we have a task on our hand here, which is to really demonstrate to you what we've been saying, right? One of the key tenets of our system is operational simplicity. We'll focus on that. We've also said enterprise grade capabilities. We wanna bring those out as part of this fly through. And then we mentioned multi-cloud namespace and the ability to manage data between edge and core. So we wanna bring all those things out to you. Uh, what's really exciting is I get to partner with my colleague and friend, Candida. Uh, she is now gonna take control and run the demo from her, her machine. Uh, so Candida is our field CTO. Uh, if the team could flip over to her machine, our goal together is to gonna be to show you the key elements of the user interface. Uh, so with that, how are you doing Candida? Uh, so I'm doing great, Paul. I'm super excited to be with you to show the power of our Tesca. That's awesome. I know you're going to bring us the energy. So this is wonderful. Uh, now, you and I have been on the inside, right? So we both know that this system and the UI is really designed to provide an easy experience for the user, right? And that means making it end to end simple is really the, been the key goal. Now, it looks like you already have the UI dashboard displayed right now. Can you do a quick remind of what the key highlights of this page are and just really focus on operational simplicity. Uh, yes, yeah, sure. So you're 100% right. That overall goal is operational simplicity. What you will notice throughout this quick tour is that we don't assume the user is a storage administrator. And there's also no need to have Linux administrator experience. We have elevated the UI above those types of complex issues. Okay, that's really great because what it means is that you can be an expert, but you can also be a non-expert and operate the system. Absolutely. This makes the system accessible and usable to people with a wide range of skills. Uh, let me show you. Notice that I have in here several layers of the dashboard UI page. Right here on the top, what we provide you is an easy at a glance like view of your data health. Right next to it, you will see the health of your data management task. And right below, you will see the next layer that shows your S3 data services. You can define one or more, or more of those ones. Since our Tesca is a multi-tenant storage solution, you can have an S3 endpoint data service for your applications, for your use cases, or even for your user groups. That will keep them logically separated and will also help with network security. Okay, I get it. So I could have a dedicated data service for multiple apps, like maybe a backup app, an analytics app, and so on. Uh, but here, the one you've defined says AIML. So it looks like it's some kind of machine learning application. Is that right? That's right. This demo, our Tesca deployment is for an Edge application use case. Paul, let's do some VR right now. And let's imagine we are in a factory location where they have cameras and sensors capturing and creating data on the factory floor of the parts being manufactured. Applications in that factory can use their Tesca system to store image data on the manufacturing line and the machine learning application may be analyzing those images to enrich them with metadata tags. The data service will support storing both the image data and the extended metadata attributes from those applications. Okay, I'm, I'm very happy you mentioned metadata, right? It's extremely relevant. We hear it all the time about object storage, uh, but we certainly hear about the rise of new application workloads, AI and machine learning, and metadata for enriching that kind of uh, data is really valuable. Now, can you talk about the next layer down, the one that says storage services? Yeah, this is where things get way more interesting because we get into their test cast multi-cloud capabilities. Noted that I have right here in a storage service defined for my Artesca instance in the factory location. You see there Artesca one. It's a single server deployment with around 70 terabytes capacity. Right next to it, I also have a multi-petabyte deployment on the Scalator ring within the same namespace. That Scalator ring is deployed remotely in a central data center. And right next to that one, you see two cloud storage services, one for AWS S3 and the other one for Microsoft Azure Blob. So you have four different storage services within one single namespace. 
Okay, I get it. So it's basically, I can see all of my data in one UI console. I think all of us here have heard about the famous one pane of glass, right? But this really seems to deliver it. And as I understand it, and as I know, this also provides data management capabilities across all of these backends. Is that right? A hundred percent. In fact, that's what I have in here in the top level, lifecycle uh, hell view refers to. It shows the status of the application and lifecycle management workflow. And those workflows can operate between any of the storage locations and cloud services you have defined. Okay, so to tie it back into some of the comments I made earlier and what you set up, you could have an edge site in the factory, you could have camera image data, and then you could replicate that back to a central data center or to a cloud. That has a lot of applications for the edge, right? I, I totally agree. Now, what about the next one down, the platform layer? Can you show us a little bit about what you can get in terms of information regarding the underlying platform? Of course. Let's click in here and let's see. Now, the first thing we see is that since our Tasca is a cloud native architecture, this view starts at the Kubernetes layer. This allows me to see the Kubernetes platform level services, health and performance indicators. Once I have viewed the platform at the Kubernetes layer, I can click on the task right here on the left side of the page to get more details about the nodes and the storage volumes. Uh, you remember, Paul, this Artesca in the factory has one server. So here, it shows me that one single uh, node. I can click in here and now I can browse and see the overall status of the node. I can get health and performance uh, and utilization information. I can get things like CPU, memory utilization and performance metric are all displayed in here. If you notice also, I have here a volume tab. I can click in here and I can see more info about that volume layer where it will show me the listing of all the, the volumes in that specific node, the relevant health utilization and performance indicators about them. Okay, I get it. So we wanna talk, that's a great view. Thank you very much. Uh, but I wanna talk more about enterprise grade capabilities. And I think this kind of monitoring of the platform is a part of that. But users also expect storage systems to detect and alert the administrator about things like faults, right? Like a failure at the platform layer. Can you show us quickly what happens if a disk fails in this UI? Definitely, and while you were talking about that, my disk fail. So here it shows a failure of a disk. Uh, the user is already, as you can see, alerted visually here in the UIs. For example, this is highlighted uh, in alert that will show if a volume fails in the node. The data held view of the dashboard will also show you a change in data protection status when it disk fails. But you don't have to worry about it because Artesca will rebuild the data on the failed disk through a self-healing process. So once that has completed, your data protection will return to its original fully protected state. Okay, so Artesca can deal with the types of platform and component failures. It can alert the user and it can also resolve the issues through self-healing, that's really great. Uh, there's one other part of enterprise grade I want to talk about, and that is storage utilization and analytics. Uh, this is a hot topic. You know, it's certainly needed for capacity planning. Give us a little bit of a view into what the UI can do in terms of analytics. Yes, Artesca has a comprehensive analytics capability. I can change right now. We'll change the page now to the account view and show you the type of metrics that the system uh, tracks and how it visualizes that information. So I click in here, and if you notice that I have in here focus on my storage account called factory camera. So this is the account where I'm capturing the image data from the factory floor. As I click this account, this factory camera account, I get a comprehensive view of the storage and performance utilization metrics. For example, how much capacity is being consumed by the buckets and the objects in this account how many objects I have stored, and even metrics about things like throughput and the numbers of operations the application has done against this specific account. The graph here also showed, you know, trending metrics which helps with capacity planning, as you had mentioned before, that is super important. And we all know, you know, DevOps, we talked about the DevOps folks, can use this to get a projection on how fast their storage is filling up and to identify when the system will need to be a scale out 
in order to add more capacity. Okay, I get it, right? So it's a lot of comprehensive information. It's presented very clearly. And as we said before, Arteska can start small like you have here on a single server, but of course it can easily grow or scale out one server at a time. That is right. The operational simplicity means both the tasks that you perform weekly or daily, daily but also the tasks that you know, they come every few months or quarter, like growing the system with additional capacity. They're all very, very easy to do. Okay, thanks very much for that. Now, I wanna transition because before we finish, I do wanna show our audience one more thing. And that is there's an integrated data browser in the Arteska UI. Can you show us that? Yes, do that. Let me show you in here. As you can see, if I click right here in the data browser, what you will see is that the page is a data browser. It's fully integrated in the UI. So you don't have to switch to a different browser or tool. Uh, this browser lets me see all buckets that you can see in here uh, that I have in my account. And I can even click on any of them and browse the data objects in it. For example, let me see, let me see camera one bucket. So let's see what I have right here for camera one bucket. So now you have a bunch of images that I already store under that specific account. Those are the images from the cameras on the factory floor. And now if I click on any of them, in the UI, the UI also will give me a way to download the object if I want to view it. Let's see, here it is. Let's check this one, here it is. Very cool, okay, I, I see. So you can create buckets, you can upload and download objects, you can view the objects, super integrated. I remember the days where you had to jump out to a separate tool to do that. Now, you and I talked a little bit about metadata, right, on objects. Can you quickly show us what's available in the UI for metadata? Yeah, by clicking on an object, I can view metadata attributes and tags. Both are supported through the S3 API and can also edit or add new attributes here to the UI. It's super easy. Notice that we have some attributes that describe the machine from the machine learning application. Okay, I understand. So you can edit metadata, you can add new tags and, and key value attributes. Uh, how about search? Can you show us what the search uh, looks like? Yeah, I'm showing it right now. I just did a search for a color named blue. I can see all the, the results. Now let's do a search for a file that is, you know, for meta, for PDF. So now I see all my PDF listing. Uh, it makes locating the right data very easy. And know that this can also be accessed access programmatically through the API. So search is available both in the UI and for applications. Okay, so this really follows our theme, right? That everything available through the UI is also available through a API. That can mean applications, it can mean tools and consoles and scripts. A very powerful Candida, I really appreciate this. Thank you very much for the tour. Uh, with that, uh, we can, Stephen, we can jump back to the slide deck. Candida, you really brought it. Thank you again. Thank you guys. We wanted to provide this kind of quick view and really focus on a few key capabilities. There's much more behind the scenes. Obviously, we focused on these three bullets. Multi-cloud, we think, is a major thing, right? Data management is really what people look for in this day and age in terms of the value in, you know, unlocking the value of their data and things like that. Over time, you'll see us add more and more capabilities. You know, we really see this as a fit. Uh, one other thing I didn't say is that we also support a Prometheus API. Uh, Prometheus is kind of emerging as well in this Kubernetes space, and we see uh, the UI, the API, and Prometheus as being really valuable for remote monitoring of applications. So that's another part of our management uh, and monitoring capabilities.